Welcome back. You're watching Business Morning on Channels Television. On Tuesday, uh, a report from World Economics and International Data and an Analysis Firm showed that Nigeria is getting out of recession, is out of recession, it says, and is growing quite strongly and listed some very key parameters, including the sales managers index and uh, market growth index, which showed an appreciation. And in the last couple of months, we've seen uh, purchasing managers index from the Central Bank of Nigeria and the from FBN Quest showing that there's been an improvement in that regard as well. But there's been conflicting information, especially from market watchers and economists with regards to this piece of information, that if indeed Nigeria is out of recession, then the federal government should be the one to announce it. But let's get the perspectives of Dr. Ayodili Teriba, who is an economist and chief executive officer of Economic Associates. Uh, good morning to you, Dr. Teriba. It's great good to morning. have you on the program. Thank you. So, um, are we out of the woods yet? Is, is Nigeria out of recession, would you say? Well, there are indications, you know, uh, a few indicators that, you know, suggest very strongly that the economy uh, perhaps turned the tide. Um, first, you've got the oil price. Next, you've got the external reserves. Then you've got the exchange rate itself, you know, the, the prior market exchange rate. Um, the reserves growing steadily for six months is an indication that whatever problem, you know, uh, made reserves to decline steadily you know most of last year has been solved mm -hmm. so you have an upturn so if you have an upturn that's going to reflect in the growth the data uh, with a lag you know we don't observe growth data every week we don't observe it every month we observe growth data every quarter and you wait for another month and a half if not two, actually end of the quarter before you get an announcement from the Bureau of Statistics. So the chances are that GDP growth figures for first quarter are likely to be positive. But you won't get to know that until the Bureau of Statistics releases the GDP figures uh, around the middle of May. So is it that, you know, this taking a look, listen now to most of this uh, analysis from international firms, is it that they're being too hasty in saying that Nigeria is out of a recession? They are not hasty. It's likely that Nigeria is out of recession. Uh, but they have access. They are, they are interpreting some coincident in indicators of economic activity. GDP is a lagging indicator of economic activity. And the government, you know, base their own decision on GDP. So the government is likely to be one of the last, you know, to announce a recovery. Uh, market watchers, when those who are monitoring uh, purchasing managers index or sales indices, are likely to pick up the recovery faster than the rest of us. So maybe t the time has come for the federal government to review how it measures the growth of the economy, not the GDP anymore? Not quite. Um, there are business indicators. There are economic indicators. Um, government will use GDP numbers, even in spite of the lag. Uh, just like when the recession started, it took a while, you know, for all government officials to agree that the recession had started. You know, we had situation where ministers made conflicting remarks. One saying the, the recession had started, the other denying it. But eventually, so there's nothing to hurry about. Mm. Uh, we should wait, you know, for G GDP figures. Um, business people need to take decisions, you know, about, you know, uh, short-term uh, operational issues. I mean, government shouldn't, you know, uh, be that hasty. But then, just yesterday, uh, a senior official of the World Bank actually still commented on the, the, the tightness of the Forex market. And one would be a little bit surprised, especially in light of what the Central Bank of Nigeria has done in the last couple of weeks in terms of intervening in the Forex market. We've also seen uh, a better convergence of rates at the official window and the, uh, and the street market as well. But what do you make of all of these comments, particularly around the FX market? 
Right. Uh, the developments are relative, not absolute. Uh, the situation is better uh, for the forex supply with an external reserves of 30 billion US dollars. Better than the situation we had been in most of last year until October. We, we got to 25 billion, as low as 25 billion US dollars. So 30 billion US dollars is better than 25 billion US dollars. But 36 billion US dollars will still will even be better. So you'd expect the gaps to close. You know, rates, uh, the gaps are closing, but they are not converging yet. It's when they converge that comments about market is tight will stop. You know, so there are improvements. We are not there yet. Uh, let's hope that the improvements that has made the reserves to accrue to 30 billion will continue and we will see 36 billion. It's, that's the threshold, you know, 36 billion and beyond when you say the market can be calm or it will, will converge. And uh, if, if it rises significantly above that level, you can have appreciation of all the rates in the market. So, Dr. Tariba, would you say there's been an improvement in the ease of doing business now? Exchange rates and ease of doing business are two different things. But then you need the exchange rates to actually do business because most of the businesses actually have to repatriate their, their dividends and then you still have some that need this forex to buy remember, their goods. Remember that movements in the exchange rate are two-edged swords. Your loss it's my gain. You know, one party's gain is another party's loss. So it's not, it has nothing to do with the ease of doing business. It has more to do with risks, you know, mm. and returns. So, but ease of doing business is another topic which the government is dealing with. And um, it's probably one piece of policy where the most progress, you know, is being made. And so you would expect that the business will become easier to do in Nigeria, regardless of those things in macro variables that exchange rate represents. But then how would you, you know, how would you grade this, you know, the, the federal government actually uh, launched that 60-day plan to see how they could improve doing business in terms of bringing in your goods and services, in terms of getting your visas, maybe at the point of entry instead getting of having... Getting permits. And, and, know, and the rest of it. So how would you, you know, rate it? Have you been following the progress of it? Oh, yes. And uh, you can't get it any better than what the government is doing. It's been led by the vice president and you recalled what happened after he visited uh, one of the airport terminals you know when you know the directors you know of the agency were relieved of their duties so what, what do you want the government to do you, mm. yeah, i mean they are doing it the way it should be done and you one should be confident that one will get results so results from domestic investors or international investors because one of the, uh, the the major challenges for nigeria has always been the ranking when you know the world bank does its ranking with regards uh, ease of doing business nigeria always comes among the last five last ten yes. and there hasn't been an improvement in the last couple of years it seems as if we take one step up and then ten steps back and that's where we're basically at at the moment and so the ease of doing business is a priority for this administration and yeah it's because of those indicators because of those, those low ranks for nigeria that the government is treating those reforms as priority and when i said results i mean results that will mean that nigeria will go you know so many steps up you know in the ranking now you were talking about response from uh, investors hmm? uh, whether domestic or foreign uh, you'll be, you have to be careful, you know, uh, bees have more to do with those who already have operations, who already have business operations, whether you're a foreign investor or you're a domestic investor. It's about ease of doing business for those who are already in the business. It does not address the important issue of getting more foreign investors to come in here and do business here. That's not anything to do with the ease of doing business. That's more to do with the ease of entry for new investors, mm -hmm. which given government monopoly in many large infrastructure sectors, is zero. You can't enter, however willing you are. Even when you hear that, okay, Nigeria is now an environment where business is easy to do. The fact that there's government monopoly in rail there's government monopoly in power transmission. means that you can only watch 
from outside. You can't come in. So government still needs to, you know, apply equal energy to the breaking of government monopoly. But so that you, more foreign investors can actually come in and do business here. But then government is, is doing quite well, uh, 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 well, based on what we hear from economists and market watchers with regards to uh, fighting corruption. Do you think that uh, the recent moves by, this, by the government uh, has or will impact on the perception of investors? Oh, definitely. I mean, that's the, the, the you know, government's uh, tenacity in fighting corruption, you know, of, of course it's going to, you know, improve investors' perception about Nigeria. But then, aside of that, you still have the issues with policies. There are some policies that investors are hoping that will become more friendly. They feel that it's too stringent and, like you rightly pointed out, still kind of monopolistic, giving the federal government more powers and crowding out the private sector. Is it time for all of these policies to be reviewed in, the, in light of the federal government's um, desire to have more foreign portfolio investors come in and invest in, in the economy, including private equity investors as well? Yeah, yeah, it's time, you know, for uh, those policies to be reviewed. It's time that Nigeria opens up to foreign investment across all infrastructure sectors. It's very key. You know, uh, countries that get to grow fast are those who have enough investment in infrastructure. And if you look at the example of India, that investment came from abroad, not from within. So Nigeria is in a similar position. Nigeria will do well to open up all infrastructure sectors, including education, health, to foreign investment. So it seems as if uh, most of the policies that uh, right now are, have the, uh, well, the order of the day are mostly trade policies and agri policies. And even at that, um, some investors still have issues with it. If, you know, you had to advise, how would you suggest that uh, these policies should be reviewed? The critical ones for the critical sectors of the economy that will, among other things, create jobs and further boost the growth of the Nigerian economy. Well, how countries who have been successful in, in attracting investment to you know, a broad you know, group of sectors have done it. Uh, and here, like India or like Saudi Arabia, is to come out with a list, a list of all the sectors and say, for this small number of sectors, we don't want any foreign investment. It could be for reasons of national security, it could be for reasons of protecting domestic players, we don't want, so you have a prohibition list. Then for the remaining list, you have two categories. You know, where you, well, India calls it the automatic route, where you could come in and invest. You don't need any special government approval. Then the other one is the government route, where you need government approval before you come in. And then you let us know, you know, in advance, what percentage of involvement you want to allow the foreign investors. There are sectors where they limit their government to 25%. There are sectors where they can do 49%. And there are sectors where they can do 100%. So government needs to put those figures on the table, you know, to engage the investors. You can't just sit down and keep hoping that uh, once the investors' perceptions improve, they will come in. We actually have to go as far you know, as coming out, out with a list of where and where not, you know, they can play. And then investors would engage. So, Dr. Teruba, for you, at, at this, even at, uh, apart from the reports we're getting from the international firms, the World Bank, for instance, is predicting Nigeria's economy will grow 0.8% uh, for 2017. But in the very short to medium term, what's your expectation, especially as it seems as if things are looking a little better? data-wise, but not uh, for the average Nigerian's pocket. Right. Um, two key variables that you might, you know, use as a yardstick for gain, gauging where the economy is likely to end. Uh, the average oil price in 2015, the year before the recession, was $53 a barrel. And it fell to 45 Okay. Production was uh, 2.2 million barrels a barrel, uh, million barrels per day. And it fell to 1.83 or something. So 
you got a recession because of those declines. Now, both variables, the oil price and oil production, are back to 2015 levels. As a matter of fact, the price is slightly better than 2015 level. So you might expect the economy to recover to conditions we last saw in 2015. Okay, so rather than a decline in GDP, you expect a growth that could be up to 2% or more than 2%. And you'd expect you know, a more stable exchange rate, you expect a lower inflation rate. That's my take. Dr. Ayodele Teriba, economist and chief executive officer of Economic Associates, many thanks for coming on the program and sharing your perspectives with us. Thank you very much.